Hello everyone. As you can tell, I might be holding a new LED microphone. Hopefully my voice sounds all right. We haven't quite got enough money for the uh, microphone stand yet, so you'll see me awkwardly holding this. I want to dedicate more time to developing these videos, and this LED microphone for me is a way to do it. I really like helping people make things easier, as well as give me feedback for what I can do better. So I want to first and foremost say I will be creating more videos and I will be creating more blog posts. So thank you for the people who have liked and have subscribed to this channel. I really do hope to grow it and I'm sorry I've been inconsistent in the past. But I want to make this promise now that that is not going to be the case going forward. Me and a coworker have created our own company where we're going to professionally help people do this. But I'm also promising that first and foremost, I want to make sure everything that we do in that company, people can learn how to do themselves. This isn't something that you have to pay us to do or pay to watch these videos or I'm not even telling you to go to the website. I just hope that you like this content. Maybe like and subscribe if you feel up to it and give me some feedback on what I can do better or what you guys want to know about. So now that that is over with, I have an interesting problem I want to solve using Power Automate today and automation in general. Currently, we get an email from a new client when they fill out a form. I want that email to then forward some information to an Excel document and also create a Teams card and post to a channel so that we can track these real time with the team. And as many of you have probably seen, I, I do like Microsoft Teams, so that's where I'm going to put it all today. So without too much talking, let's get into it. Editor Justin here. I forgot. One of the most important parts before we can do the rest of the content I wanted to show we need to create the flow. So in this case, we'll create this automated flow. I called it before, so we're just gonna call this editor. If I can spell that right, maybe that's right or wrong. Editor flow. And we're gonna create our email win or shared mailbox is what this flow is gonna be called. When a new email arrives in a shared mailbox. And I explained this in the other part, but this is where you would enter the original address. So back to your regularly scheduled content. Okay, so let's talk about the problem here. Like I said, we're getting emails right now when people fill out these forms. So I'm gonna fill out one of these forms right now on our site, flowdevs.io. So we're just gonna say, Justin, my email is gonna be uh, test at test co, whatever, tetco, petco, Test co, whatever. And it can be whatever here. Obviously, this won't be the same for your website. Maybe I should say obviously, but whatever email you're trying to parse needs to have some sort of format. So in this format, I'm trying to parse these blocks that somebody puts in. The company name will do test company. And in the test, we're just trying to get some data so that we can then feed it to Power Automate to test. I did do a little cheating here. And I built this flow. And I'll, I'll go through every single step here. Right now, I'm getting uh, this flow. The trigger is whenever a new email arrives in a shared mailbox. That shared mailbox is called inquire. I was a little confused at first. So the original mailbox address is the address of that shared mailbox. The folder it's going to is inbox. This is who's sending it. You don't need to have this. This is stuff I added so that we don't get unwanted emails to trigger this flow. And then the subject filter is new form submission, which is not actually. I don't think this will run, actually. Let's see. We'll actually get to change something. So new form submission is wrong. I have in testing, I found that this doesn't trigger quite right when doing data like this. You can't really parse HTML easily. And I was just trying to create something easy. So I dumbed down what we get by a lot. So that way I can parse this easier and we can put that data later. We're gonna actually search for the word form in the subject filter. And we might need to resubmit this so I'm just going to save this. So the subject filter is forum. And let's refresh this website and try again.
So test co two test at tetco two dot com and then test company two. All right, so that form has been submitted. I've been seeing we use Webflow and it does take about five minutes or so for them to come through. It's not 10 minutes, but so Tedco 2 came through. 10 hour block form was filled out. Now we need to go check to see if our flow ran, which it doesn't look like it did. So something in our filter doesn't look like it's right. Let's take a look at why this didn't run. So the subject filter there is, we'll just edit this one that worked because I know it worked and we'll just save it. The subject filter is form and it did actually work. It just took a while for it to come through. So this is kind of what I got in Microsoft Teams. You can see Tet Tetco 2 came through. The first one didn't because the subject filter wasn't right. Then I'm parsing name, email, company, and form. How that's happening is a little bit of wizardry. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the compose action because that's really not here nor there. That can be done by a pro developer or, or I'll show you the article where I found it and put it in the description. So I'm parsing this HTML because that's what an email is formatted as is HTML. I'm parsing the body of the email to text. Then I'm creating variables. So I'll show you this. It might be kind of hard to see in this format. So let me show you in a text and you can, you can edit these expressions outside of this, which I like to do because it's easier to see. I'm taking this data, I'm trimming it, and I really don't fully understand this, so I'm not going to explain it because I can't simply. But if you were to use something similar, what I'm, what you need to change here would be the name and email. And what that's doing is it's saying parse from here to here and grab everything in between. So it's grabbing test code two. And you can see that here. Apparently I wanted to up, uh, oh, I, I'm grabbing the wrong data here. See, I'm getting this twice. So the name, it needs to be different. So let's go back and see what's happening there. Oh, this is why we just sent the wrong data. So we'll change that. And I do all of this for testing my flows. I send it to a personal email to me. And the nice part, because we tested this or we sent it, we, we already got a one trigger. You can just test again with that same data. And now you'll see that it switched over to test code too. So now we're parsing test code two, test and test company two, which is the data I'm looking for. Now I want to add that to an Excel spreadsheet for all the new clients we have, right? For all the new invoices. So I'm going to use SharePoint for this. We have a project team. I'm going to create a new. Actually, let's do this in tasks. We'll add tasks to this and we're going to create a new tab and call it projects. And we're going to use tasks instead because it's a little bit easier to uh, see what's going on here. So we're going to call this new projects. I think we can do this all um, with once in power automate. So we have that, we have a new project tab task. And this will help us so we have new projects, basically bucket. Kind of use this theory. Some people use it for like Agile or Kanban, which is just a methodology for solving issues in a faster methodology. 
Uh, you could just create a ticket, work through that, or an Excel spreadsheet. I, I try to stay away from that because what happens is then you have an Excel database, which can be messy. So let's add an action here. We know it works when we send a test. So now let's go to tasks. Let's create a task. So the group ID is going to be that group that we created, which is projects. The plan ID will be projects. And the title is going to be company name dash subject. And I'll tell you why we're going to use subject in this case. It's because the subject is the 10 hours that they purchased. So now we have that done. All right, perfect. And now we're going to, I believe we can add data to that. And we're going to do tasks again. It might even be planner. We're going to update a task. Which we should be able to get dynamically. And then here we go. The ID of the task. So we're getting the ID from the previously created task. We're not going to change the title. See, this isn't what I wanted either. We don't want to change the title. Let's see if we can find. Delete a task, list my tax, remove assignees, updated task. List task, list buckets. Update a task details. And we're going to go down here again to go enter custom values again. And we're going to grab the same ID. The description of the task. Oh, here we go. We can create the checklist item. So reached out. Oh, cool. So this is pretty cool. Reference alias. We don't actually want this. I don't think. I think we just want to create new checklist items. So contact client at contact. We're going to do this contact. And then their email address. So we're going to contact this person at the title. Um, Oh, no, no, no. We want this to be the title. Is it going to let me pop? No, it didn't look like it. Let's try this again. So we're going to contact person at, at email address. And this isn't going to be checked because nobody's contacted them yet. Checklist ID. I think we can just leave that as one. We're going to add an ID to... And we're going to say contact this person at. We actually can just in this case have one. Because we're going to create the task. And call it company name our block. And then the first task will be to contact this person. And I think that's all we need. Let's see what this does. It didn't like it. Body checklist. Oh, okay, okay. Checklist ID one. We'll see. I'm not, I've never used that specific task before. Let's try again. Okay, it did work. Got the email, which is good. And it created this in no bucket. 
So I think we can actually put that in a bucket. So now you can see contact client name at or username at this email address. You can add comments to the tasks and things like that. Let's see if we can change the bucket it's in really quick too. Create a task, bucket ID, here we go. New project, so we're gonna put it in new projects. Now let's test this again, and this will just keep creating new tasks. It won't update the existing task because we're not doing anything to parse the tax, tasks, but you could parse the tasks to see if one already existed. So there we go, new hour block from this. Let's see contact, this person's there. We might even be able to get it this to show. Let's see if there's a way to uh, show this. Let's try one more thing here to see. There's a way to show the tasks on the card. I'll show you what I mean if, if this works. No, it doesn't look like it. Which that's going to be fine in this case. I'll show you what I meant though. Um, this is just something for me, like just to save some time. It's not, not something that needs to be perfect. This can be evolved with on time. And that's really the beauty of Power Automate is it can just be, so you can check this box to show on a card. And now when you look at it, you can see that this is there. So you can check it off. But that's fine for now. So now we have tasks. We could add the same information to an Excel document. So let's just do that too, because um, I want to. So we'll create a new form uh, and we'll call it uh, projects. And this will be kind of actually helpful because we would be able to do, oh, it's creating a form. Oh, we don't want to do that. Well, that's okay. I'm not going to sign in there. So one thing we need to do is create a table. So we're going to go, we're going to fill out our headers first. So we'll call this uh, project type. Project type company. Client. Uh, we'll call this contact and then we'll call this email and because i know in the future we're going to want to know if they paid or not i'm just going to add this not paying <laughs> we all know people would be paying but i'm just going to add that because uh in the future if i if i want to do some alerting with that task it's easier to do that so we're going to insert a table uh my table has headers now, the cool part about this is if you go into table design, we're going to rename this so you can see what this does, because this actually confused me a while. So we're going to call this uh, projects. So that'll be the table name. Where'd my, where'd my Power Automate go? Oh, it's right here. Oh, yeah. So we have that task. We don't need this update task. We are now going to update that Excel file. So we'll say uh, add row. We're going to add a row into a table. The document is going to be located in that team, which is the project team or group. The document library will be documents. And then now we select our project Excel spreadsheet. And here's where we should see the projects table, which is what I. So the project type is going to be the subject again, because that's the, the type of project. The company name will be the company name. The contact will be the person and the email address will be their email. And then we're just going to put this as no for now because it's new, but in the future, we're gonna add payments into our website. So this field will be filled out possibly dynamically in the future. 
So we did that. I want to do one more thing, though, because I know where this is going to go. And that's in that same team. So instead of sending this, and we're not going to use an adaptive card here. I would normally, but it's going to be so much easier to kind of explain just using it this way. So we're going to use the same post as a Flowbot into a channel. That channel is going to be projects. We're just going to use the general, I believe, here. And we'll say... New project for company name. We might even be able to use like the task. We'll see in a second here. New project for company name. Please see. I wonder if we can use a name alias to describe the reference. No, there doesn't look like there's a way to send the task. Please see task and reach out to, so we're going to say reach out to name at email. So that's what I want the message to say for now. And because we changed this to be a channel instead of a person, we'll delete that. Hopefully. This will all work. Let's run this test. Do we get any fails right away? No, that's good. So here's our here's our hour block. And like you saw, for this company, this is the contact, and they haven't paid. You just I just always delete the first blank roll. Now, if we go into teams, we'll see that there should be a new project task, hopefully. I need to refresh this. It's not refreshing. Where's the refresh button? Reload tab. No? Okay. But it did post from Power Automate, new project for test company to please see task and reach out to test co to at this. So person's name. Probably could have made that a little bit better, but as the final test, we'll do that. Oh, it's right there. Sorry. I'm I didn't see it. Okay, now we have our flow. Final step, we'll do one last test with actual data this time. We're going to change the hour block. We'll say our my we'll do my full name here and we'll just do everything to fully test this And as this as this kind of goes through, I will say the hardest part of this was figuring out how to parse that data. And I'll link this. That's usually the hardest part I've found. And in the community, I would say is very helpful for for uh, citizen developers, which just means people who want are passionate about automation but may not have the development skills to understand this, uh, you know, code. Which it's fairly simple once you get the hang of how it all functions, but some people just want to go drag and drop things, which in this case, it was a little bit harder. I had to change some formatting, but once I got the formatting right, you can see it, you know, it took me, let me look really quick how long this has been recording. Like 15, 20 minutes, max 20, 20 minutes. So about 20 minutes to fully create that flow, test it, and now finalize it. And what this flow will do is every time somebody fills out that web form, it will we get an email at inquire at flowdevs.io. That triggers the flow. It then converts the body of that email to a text variable, to a text object, I should say. Then we parse that object into variables and we use those variables to put them into a task so we can track them internally, add them to Excel, and then post a message in Teams to inform everyone that a new task has been created. 
Oh, it failed, of course. So let's see what it failed at. What didn't it like? Oh, it didn't like the field was over 100 characters in. So it didn't like that. What didn't like about that? It said it couldn't update the task because it was too long. Name five. I'm gonna pull all that information right, minus the fact that it. Let's look at the Excel tables to see what that data looks like specifically. So apparently that wasn't right. Ah, uh, didn't even make it that far. Good thing we get a troubleshoot, too, because you can see how I kind of do that. And hopefully this doesn't get too long. If it does, I'll cut it. So your schema validation has failed. So it failed on the update task. Oh, see, so it didn't parse correctly. What didn't it grab, right? So it substringed all the data. Let's look at the email now. Weird it said name five. It's name four. Company four. That might be a, f a web flow thing. So the data we got wasn't correct. Which is really weird. I'm going to try with different data because I already have, an, have a user on this. So I'm guessing it grabbed that from the user I had. Let's try with like a new user, somebody who would actually fill out the form instead of somebody who would have a user here. So let's say like test YouTuber. Test YouTuber. We'll call this the messy desk club. try this one more time here and hopefully that kind of makes sense why I don't fully understand the webflow backend that's where uh my colleague Caleb kind of run that ran that I I made some changes like I said to make that form work but it looks like it's grabbing my user ID because that's like our company name so company 4 that's my email at the site and that's their name. So that's one thing you have to be very careful about when you're doing this and parsing the data. And it's really a whole career path is the, like data sanitization, they call it. Because shit data in is shit data out. So in this case, I got shit data and I tried to apply what I thought would be, you know, standardized or sanitized data, which just means that the data comes in a format that's the same every time which it isn't in this case and that's one of the downfalls of the connector i'm using just parsing the text but in this use case yeah that's exactly what i thought so it's pulling those user numbers from webflow which is why the numbers came through so we don't we don't we aren't actually creating users in webflow so for us that would never happen Come on. But I suspect this will work now. Let's watch this and see if something comes through. Put my money where my mouth is. Come on, buddy. Well, I'll start doing the outro.
in the hopes that this works. And if it doesn't, then I'll look like a complete fool. Like I said, thank you all for who've watched my videos in the past and enjoyed maybe some of my drone content. I did mention I did start a company with one of my old coworkers called flow devs not sponsored and we're not we're not really looking to grow we're looking to grow naturally so if you have any questions like i said this form is still open i plan to write as many blog posts as i have time as well as create youtube content still in fact increase the amount of youtube content i'm coming out with so that way it's easier for people to consume the content and hopefully get led to our website in the future. But the goal number one is if people want to learn how to use these tools, I would like to help you learn. See if this ever runs. It doesn't. Oh, there we go. It's running. Yay. Finally. So that's a good outro. Oops. I closed it. But again, thank you all who've watched before. Thank you for anyone new who wants to learn about any of the automation or website design that we do. And in the future, uh, I hope to work with you more closely. There it is. Thanks, everyone. Bye.